I know a lot of people are like, the climate's not changing, whatever. Very simply, are we destroying our planet? Absolutely, yes, the way we're going right now. Uh, the temperatures have risen at least 1.7 degrees uh, uh, Celsius since 100 years ago when the, when the Industrial Revolution started. As you know, the IPCC, the International Panel on Climate Change at the UN, has the, all the scientists there have said this is not only happening, the climate change, in a drastic way, and even sooner than we expect, because primarily how uh, the greenhouse gas that we've been producing and using in coal and uh, natural gas and, ga and the oil. In fact, uh, the latest is that the Amazon, if it keeps going as the Amazon forest, uh, which is the lungs of the world, so to speak, is going to be completely deforested in a few years if it keeps going like this. And the fresh water supplies are going to be threatened completely, and they are being. What about the drastic storms we're seeing? Tremendous. It's, an, it's actually directly related to climate change, and what I would call climate disruption. The tornadoes mm -hmm. in the East Coast, in the Caribbean, the drought, uh, the ice, polar ice caps melting, the rising sea levels. The latest study came out with the ExxonMobil email that was discovered that ExxonMobil knew in 1980s, their scientists found that, that global warming is real, it is probably, it is human caused, their activity was causing it, and Exxon's own scientists told their leadership about it, and the management and ownership of ExxonMobil basically said, whoa, whoa, hold on, we're going to lose our jobs, our business if you start making this thing public, hold off guys, there's a lot more studies that have to be done about this, and the ExxonMobil ownership, the CEOs, etc., investors, hired other scientists to sow doubt in the public merchants of doubt, basically, mm -hmm. and to cloud the issue, to make it look like it's a controversial issue, the science is not in yet, all the way, and they actually paid people to do this. Right. And that's coming to the forefront right now. ExxonMobil is being investigated for doing this back in '98. So we know why this has been occurring. It's the greed, the selfishness of a few at the very, very top who want to use fossil fuels and make mm -hmm. as much money as they can. They could start transitioning to the, in their own production, to the alternative fuels. They could go to solar power, wind power, tide power. There's so much more they can utilize, as Germany has done, by the way. Germany today, 50% of its electricity is produced by renewables. Because 30 years ago, the Green Party came into power through the Green Movement, and they joined, the, they became part of the government. They got elected, along with the Social Democrats, the Red-Green Coalition. They brought in a feed-in tariff, for example, where in Germany, if you, the new environmental law just a few years ago was brought in, if you put up solar panels on your house, the utility has to pay you, had to pay you 99 cents per kilowatt hour, and it gradually went down to 49 cents per kilowatt hour after over some years. 49 cents per kilowatt hour, that's what the Germans are getting today, to produce electricity from their own rooftops to the utility. So that's an incentive for the German people to go out and put solar panels on their homes, isn't it? And not just the people, but in the industries, etc. That's how the country transitioned. It's basically shut its nuclear power plants down, and that's such a danger, nuclear power. In the United States, nuclear industry has so much of lobbying power. That's the problem. In my book, I have a section there about fracking in California. The fracking is Bernie's against, and it's against, just as bad as anything else. It's just putting a Band-Aid on the problem. Right? Exactly. Right. And what fracking has been used for very profitably for oil companies is that it's to make more profits by extracting oil and gas from places they couldn't get to before. For example, in rock formations, in shale, or behind rocks. What they do is they inject high-pressured water with chemicals and blow it up, explode it, and break the rock and get the oil and gas out. And this is causing not only earthquakes in Oklahoma and Arkansas, and maybe even here in LA, but it's polluting our water supply. Quite often that, that water, fracked water, is dumped next to the aquifers. It's all documented in my book, by the way. I could get sued for this, it's not true, but I got great evidence for all of this, right? So fracking. California tried to put a moratorium on fracking a, year, a little less than a year ago. The state legislature was about to vote on it, and the oil companies had given so much money to the legislators that though it defeated, got defeated, the moratorium yeah. was defeated, right. and those legislators who took seven times the amount of money from the oil companies voted against the moratorium. Mm -hmm. Those who took less than one seventh from the oil companies who took no money from them voted for the moratorium, mm -hmm. and they were outvoted. And OpenSecrets.org will tell you how many dollars they've been giving, how many millions of dollars mm -hmm. in the last few years, or sometimes even dozens of millions in the period of a decade, mm -hmm. and that kind of money has long-range and short-term effects because the members of Congress know when they're about to get reelected, they've got to have that money coming again.